Yo, what is up guys? It's your boy Jelson here and today we're back with a brand new NBA video. In today's video, we're talking about the Minnesota Timberwolves and how they are the real deal this season. They are nothing fake. They are nothing like they have been in the past where it feels like they're just a mediocre or below average team that's not going to make the playoffs once again. It's just like how it always is, you know, since 2004, we've made the playoffs once, once. That was when we had Jimmy Butler and you know how that ended. But this year, it looks a lot different. And we played on national TV last night. And well, the world got to see how good the Timberwolves are. Or if you want to view it as how bad the Lakers are. It depends on how you view it. But I like to view it as the Timberwolves being really good this year. Because we did beat them 110 to 98. They're 16 and 14. We're 14 and 15. So to say that the Lakers are just bad and that's why. But even though they have a you know better record than us. And it doesn't make much sense. Anyway, um we did hold to lebron to only 18 shots he had 18 points so eight points on 18 shot attempts um or excuse me i don't think he had 18 yet he, he actually had less than 18 shot attempts which is kind of abnormal for a guy like lebron i'm pretty sure and you know holding him to 18 points that's a lot of credit to jared vanderbilt which i made a video on earlier this year i, I mean i guess earlier this month i think I think it was earlier this month. Anyway, I made a video on Jared Vanderbilt and he was playing defense on LeBron the entire game and he locked LeBron down. I mean, to the best of his ability, to best of really anyone's ability. And a lot of people are saying that Jared Vanderbilt is the new LeBron stopper, which I kind of agree with. And LeBron played kind of poorly. Uh, 18 points, as I said, 10 rebounds, five assists. And he did his thing, but just not enough, I should say. LeBron should be taking over games like KD was during that time where you know the nets were playing with basically all rookies and no names because everybody had covid and now kd has covid you know prayers up to him hopefully he gets better um but to see lebron just basically not step up in a big way is kind of shocking considering he had been the past like i don't know like six or seven games so that's something interesting anthony davis had nine points but he got injured he actually has a sprained mcl so hopefully he heals up quickly you hate to see players of his caliber you know actually players of any caliber really get injured but you hate to see anthony davis get injured hopefully he can heal up fast he's supposed to miss about a, a month of uh, action but you know hopefully he can come back sooner than that and heal faster but yeah anthony davis only had nine points and only one rebound but he only played 20 minutes because of the injury so can't really say much about anthony davis so I, I really won't and then russell westbrook had 14 points four rebounds and three assists something i did want to bring up about russell westbrook is he played like terrible it was bad like you look at it and it's like okay 14 points that's not terrible but no he had like multiple layups that were wide open or even slightly contested and he just bricked them it, it was bad he just missed open layups um Camarillo did his thing eight points two rebounds uh and four assists he did a sink hit a couple good threes in the second quarter i believe to put the game close up i think it was like a one point or two point game and he hit those two threes um but their leading score was isaiah thomas the man literally just got signed to a 10-day contract and yes i'm not gonna lie some of those points did come in garbage time but he was really showing that he could do his thing he was drawing fouls he was hitting floaters and he had a couple of nice threes where he got the ball faked the defender out and just drained it it was pretty good i mean you know isaiah thomas definitely should be in the league don't know why he wasn't league against him but anyway yeah isaiah thomas he definitely should at least get a contract uh that's more than 10 days it should be like at least a year or two but we'll see what happens obviously and then going on the timberwolves side of things we have malik beasley who dropped 17 points four rebounds four assists malik played solid he was kind of mid for the first half i would say uh he's very inconsistent with shooting but he had a okay shooting night and he kind of provided what we needed in clutch areas where he would have a wide open three and he would drain it so i'm not even gonna disrespect him because he was hitting shots that he should hit and well that's you know what you expect so that's basically it for malik beasley he played he played fine i guess uh, Jared Vanderbilt, four points, and you're like, okay. But no, Jared Vanderbilt is the one that played LeBron, played on defense against LeBron, and locked him down. Played great on defense, and had 16 rebounds, a career high for him on some Dennis Rodman type beat. And he's literally the modern day version of Dennis Rodman. If they worked out together in the summer, that would be crazy. Well, obviously, I don't know what Dennis Rodman is doing these days besides talking to North Korea, but I don't know. 
Uh, we'll see what happens though. Jared Vanderbilt ended up working out with Dennis Rodman. That'd be crazy. Uh, he played extremely well. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns had 28 points, 10 rebounds, and four assists, which he literally babied AD the entire game while AD was out there. It was sad. Like AD went out sad. Um, but yeah, 28 points. He didn't quite hit that 30 point mark, which is kind of sad, but you know, he played fine. Uh, actually, I shouldn't say he played fine. He played fantastic. 10 rebounds. He had that double double, four assists. This is probably the best game Cat has played this season. And he, he's had a couple, you know, good games. But nothing fantastic until really last night. It was, you could see that he was really out there trying to do everything possible. And he did so. And we came across with the W. Um, the, but coming up next, we have Patrick Beverly. Patrick Beverly, he played really well. Uh, nine points, seven assists, and nine rebounds. Nine rebounds from a guard is really, really good. So shout out to Patrick Beverly for that. Um, he did get a technical foul for hitting a layup and then saying that somebody was a baby. I think it was Isaiah Thomas and literally so worth it. It was the best technical I've ever seen in my life. I love it so much. Um, and yeah, that's basically it for Patrick Beverly. He played a good all around game. And then D'Angelo Russell had 17 points, three rebounds, six assists. So he played pretty well too. Uh, did his thing, facilitating playmaking, scored a little bit and D'Lo played well. But I feel like the big bright spot for the Timberwolves team was Jalen Noel because we didn't know he had shown some spark of life last season and that he also showed some uh, spark of life earlier in this season. But coming off the bench in a you know a national televised game and dropping 14 points, like you can't expect much more from him. So I'm not even upset. Like you can't be upset. 14 points, three rebounds, one assist. He had a couple nice shots. He had a deep three on. I can't remember who was guarding him. He had a deep three. It was kind of nasty. And he had another three. Kind of had a couple good drives. He had one where it was like there's like two people on top of him and he still laid it in and finished it. It was pretty nice. It should have been end one, but they didn't call it. Um, but yeah. So this game was pretty interesting because the Timberwolves played extremely well. And you know, I'm, I'm going to be honest. The Lakers played extremely poorly. And that's usually what happens when a team wins. Uh, and another team loses the team that lost played poorly, you know, but the Lakers just seemed like they didn't care Which is so upsetting like I'm not even a Lakers fan or whatever But if you are a Lakers fan I couldn't imagine watching this game because it felt like they just didn't care at all as I said It, it felt like they were just kind of there and they're doing their thing, but not well It was it felt like they were a JV team playing a varsity team and that's not even Typically, no disrespect to the Lakers because typically they're fine. They're usually solid at best or not at best. I should say solid at worst. Um, but they just didn't seem like they cared. And I'm not going to complain. But if I was a Lakers fan, I'd be mildly upset about that. But yeah, guys, that was my overview, overview of the Timberwolves game. But I want to talk about just, wow, this Timberwolves team is playing at an extremely high level and I felt like that Lakers game was a really big show about it and they had a they're on a three game winning streak now and they've had a couple of streaks now where they're winning uh, like a bunch of games I think they had a six game winning streak earlier in the year and it was really nice and as long as we have D'Angelo Russell and we didn't even have Anthony Edwards last night which is you know sad if you're a Lakers fan but D'Angelo Russell and then Anthony Edwards and Cat. if you have all three of those guys healthy and then your role players are doing at least something we're usually going to win the game. We're a really, really good team. We're a playoff team. I don't care what anyone else tries to say, but we're playing at an extremely high level when our guys are there. We actually the number one ranked offense and defense when our rotation is in our starting rotation that is like normal, like not an injury riddle. They're COVID riddled. Uh, we are the number one offense and defense in the league. So that's something I do love to see. But yeah, guys, that's going to be the end of the video. Just had to make a relatively quick video talking about this because it was a huge game for us because I talked about in my stream yesterday that it was a really big game for standings and stuff like that. Uh, unfortunately, the Nuggets did beat the Hawks, but you know, things happen. But we play the Mavericks on Sunday and this is going to be an even bigger game. We have to win that game. I don't think Luka will be playing. So we'll see what happens. But anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching. It's Benny Boy Jelson. See you guys in the next one. Peace out.